It's been a couple months since my last Spellslinger devlog. A couple being five months, and that devlog was actually a few months late. The content in that video has been done since October. So what took so long? Well, I have been completely overhauling Spellslinger. In the past months, I have added new enemies, enemy attack animations, improved player attack animations, visual effects on words, new areas, a new boss, boss animations, attributes, a new tile triggering system, an insight mechanic, a mana system, incantations, an actual bath, and a whole complete alchemy system. So yeah, just a couple things. <laughs> I have added a lot of new things to Spellslinger that have completely overhauled the game, which means there is a lot of new stuff to cover, so let's start with the new tile triggering system. Previously, when you spelled words, the attack button would glow to signal that it was a valid word, and when you clicked attack, your attack would go off and hit enemies. Now however, that has changed. The tiles will now hover up and down when you have a valid word, and any spell tiles will glow, adding some additional effects to valid words. This isn't the big change though. The big change comes when you press attack. There is now an animation for triggering tiles. Previously, it was a little hard to tell exactly what was going on. You couldn't really see how much damage you were dealing apart from when the attack actually hit the enemy, and as this is a heavy strategy game, I wanted the player to be able to have that information. One of the ways I did this was by adding the insight mechanic. Now, whenever you hold spacebar, you can see all of the enemy's health at once, with their exact decimal values, as opposed to the usual ability to only see the health of the targeted enemy with the health rounded. But you can also see the base damage values of all tiles in the word you have spelled, letting you calculate the damage beforehand if you want. The insight mechanic is very helpful for enemies, especially if you are dealing with a lot of them and need to see all of their health values at the same time. However, it is also useful if you don't know how much damage your tiles do, especially since their base damage increases every time you level up your intelligence. But now, onto the tile triggering animation. Breaking down the animation, when you press the attack button, the word will get submitted. Each tile will show its tile damage and then add it to the total damage. If a tile has a spell, that spell will get triggered. Arcane Strike, for example, doubles the tile damage of the tile it is on, so it will do that before adding it to the total. Heal will heal you for 4 HP when it gets triggered, and other spells will modify your attack, like Fireball or Ice Javelin. All attack modifiers can be seen under your damage total, including attack features and status effects that will be applied. Additionally, artifacts that are relevant to the tile will be triggered, such as Ancient Tablet, which doubles the damage of gold value tiles, triggering before the tile damage gets added to the total, just like Arcane Strike. Once all tile damage is calculated, any status effects and attributes will trigger, like damage proficiency. We'll get to attributes later. And then any artifacts relevant to the word will trigger, such as Chrono Gauntlet, which adds 4 attack damage if your word ends in ED. Then, your attack damage will be multiplied by your attack multiplier, the animation will be done, and you will attack. So that probably seems like a lot of stuff is happening. Because it is. Spellslinger has a lot of different mechanics that affect your attack, and it can be a lot to keep track of, which is part of the reason for adding the tile triggering animation. It helps you figure out what is going on easier, but the other reason for adding it is just because it looks cool. I am very proud of how it turned out, and it is much more satisfying to see your attack build up with all of your spells, artifacts, and attributes to create one huge attack, instead of the old instant attack as soon as you click the button. The one problem with this is while it was meant to just be an animation, uh, it kind of broke the game. With the new way spells and artifacts were triggered, I had to pretty much rewrite the entire code for combat. And that is the reason why this seemingly simple animation took so long. But this wasn't the only time that animations forced me to rewrite code, because I also added melee attacks. Previously, all enemies had some sort of projectile, even enemies like slimes, which didn't really make sense to have one. This was just out of laziness because it was much easier to just make a projectile for all enemies than to actually make animations, but I decided against that. So while there are still some projectile enemies, some enemies are now melee enemies and have a melee animation. Which of course, despite just being an animation, forced me to rewrite the enemy combat code. And the slime jump animation, I actually had to use calculus for. I had to calculate a parabola between the enemy and the player, which didn't use calculus, but then to determine what direction the slime should be moving in, I had to calculate the instantaneous rate of change at its current point along the parabola, which did take calculus. So whenever someone tells you that you will never use the math you learn in school, I just proved them wrong. At least if you're going into game design. 
Anyways, let's get back to those attributes I mentioned earlier. Except, before we do that, we have to talk about alchemy. I wanted to give the player some sort of consumable item that they could take into battles to help them out. And what better thing to make for a wizard game than alchemy? Defeated enemies will sometimes drop ingredients. These ingredients can be taken to the cauldron and brewed into elixirs. Each ingredient has its own bonus, such as slime jelly healing you for 2 HP, or goblin fangs providing 0.25 damage proficiency for one turn. Again, that's an attribute, we'll get to those soon, I promise. You can mix up to three ingredients into an elixir, which will provide you with all of the effects of the ingredients you use. So if you mix a slime jelly, a goblin fang, and a bat wing, you get a mixed elixir which heals 2 HP, gives 0.25 damage proficiency for one turn, and gives 25% crit chance for one turn. You can take up to three elixirs into a battle, but they get consumed upon use. Additionally, there are unique elixirs, which have specific recipes of ingredients, and provide an additional bonus effect that you wouldn't normally get. For example, brewing together a slime jelly, a goblin fang, and the rare goblin guts, you can make a goblin guzzler, a unique elixir that, in addition to the effects of the three ingredients used to make it, also provides regeneration, a status effect that heals you at the end of the turn. These unique elixirs are powerful, but their recipes are not shown to you. You will have to experiment with ingredients to find them. Or you can be uncreative and just combine three goblin fangs together for a long duration of damage proficiency. And speaking of damage proficiency, it's finally time to talk about attributes. Unlike status effects, which are, well, status effects, attributes are more so stat buffs to the player and enemies. Some can even be stat debuffs. There are two types of attributes, temporary and permanent. Permanent attributes are, well, permanent. Some enemies have unique effects, like the fire slime's ability to inflict burn on you. But fire slimes also have the fire resistance attribute, with 25% less damage taken if the source dealt fire damage. This is shown as an attribute instead of a unique effect to the enemy, so you can clearly tell why your attack is doing less damage than it should. Some enemies might also be able to gain attributes over time, like the Slate Soldier, which gains 0.05 damage proficiency for every spell you hit it with. Permanent attributes will add up their values when gained, so if you have permanent 0.25 damage proficiency and gain permanent 0.5 damage proficiency, those add up to permanent 0.75 damage proficiency. However, this is different with temporary attributes. Temporary attributes are, well, temporary. Much like certain status effects, they have a duration attached to them, and will go away after that many turns. Temporary attributes are typically gained through your elixirs. Temporary attributes also have a different way of stacking than permanent attributes. If you have temporary 0.25 damage proficiency for one turn, and then gain temporary 0.5 damage proficiency for one turn, the 0.5 damage proficiency will override the 0.25 damage proficiency. You will always get the temporary attribute with the best value. However, if it has the same value, then you will just extend the duration. For example, if you have temporary 0.25 damage proficiency for one turn, and then gain temporary 0.25 damage proficiency for two turns, you will have temporary 0.25 damage proficiency for three turns. This might seem like a weird choice to make, but the reasoning for this is that you can't just stack high damage with elixirs. If the temporary attribute stacks like permanent attributes, then you could just make a bunch of 0.25 damage proficiency elixirs and drink them all to get a massive damage bonus. So splitting the attributes into two categories might be a little confusing, but balancing wise, it works much better. So that's the tile triggering system done, alchemy done, and attributes done, but we still have one more big mechanic to talk about. Incantations. You've probably noticed by now that the player now has a mana bar above their health bar. This mana bar will fill up by one with each tile used, until a mana notch is filled up, with a notch being 20 mana. What is this mana for though? Well, that's where incantations come in. Clicking on the player will reveal your incantations. You can have up to three incantations selected at a time. Incantations are activated abilities that cost mana notches to use. For example, Transfigure is an incantation that costs one mana notch, and will change up to two selected tiles into random vowels. So, if you're low on vowels, or just have bad ones, you can select up to two tiles and then activate Transfigure to change them into random vowels. Incantations add a whole new layer of depth to the game. Some incantations will help you change your tiles to spell better words, and some future incantations might be more combat focused, like doing direct damage to enemies. Additionally, the addition of incantations has changed the arcana stat. The old arcana was kind of weird with how it worked, and led to you being able to make even four letter words do tons of damage if you got it leveled high enough. But arcana was also really bad early game, however, the new arcana is much better. I would explain exactly what the old arcana did, but honestly, the system was just kind of confusing, which is another reason for the change. Because now, arcana will increase the amount of mana each tile gives you by 0.1 per level. Additionally, every 4 levels, you get a new mana notch, allowing you to save more mana to cast more incantations, or cast incantations that cost more than one mana notch. Mana and incantations are a fun new addition to the game, and I am excited to add more incantations later on. And with that, 
that is all of the big features I have added. I have pretty much had to rewrite the majority of the game's code for these, which is why everything has taken so long, but I am very proud of what Spellsinger has become. The game has evolved from a simple word spelling game with fun magic into the strategic synergy building sorcery game it is now. And I have left some of the new stuff out, like the new enemies, the map, and of course the new boss, because you can actually see this new stuff for yourself. Spellslinger has a demo that you can play on Steam right now. The demo features the first several areas of the game and is a good showcase of what is to come. If the game looks interesting to you, go play the demo! And you can also wishlist the game on Steam to help support it. And if you want to see more devlogs of the game's progress, which I promise will not take another 5 months this time, then you can subscribe to this channel. But for now, that is all for today's Spellslinger devlog. What's coming next? Well, uh, I might be doing a couple more big overhauls to the game. So hopefully I won't have to rewrite all the code this time! <laughs> Uh, bye.